Hello everyone. I hope you're all doing amazing. I've been going through quite a bit of a rough patch. This past year has been really tough. And I just found out a couple days ago that my fiance of eight years cheated on me. And so now we're over and it's really hard, but I'm picking up the pieces. Today we're going to be talking about a case that just baffles and infuriates me. Warning, this case does include S.A. So if you're not okay listening to this case, that's alright. Just go ahead and exit now. Completely understandable. This case is not a murder, but it's just as disturbing. Today we're going to cover the case of Louise Ogborn. Louise was an employee with McDonald's who was made to strip naked and be searched by her manager and her manager's boyfriend. This is obviously disgusting and infuriating, but why would they do such a horrendous thing? Well, if you guessed because they received a phone call from a man claiming to be a police officer and stating that Louise had stolen from a customer, then ding ding ding, you win the dick is f***ed up bingo. Before we start, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Thank you. Now, let's start from the beginning of this situation. Donna Summers, a 51-year-old woman, is working her shift as assistant manager at a McDonald's in Kentucky. She answers the phone and a man, claiming to be Officer Scott, tells her that an employee with this description of slim build blonde hair female, which what the hell, that could be basically anybody, come on. The officer didn't even give a name, meaning there's clearly no warrant and no basis for any of the bullshit that would follow. Not that any of that should ever have taken place by the people that it did. If you suspect someone of a crime, you still have to get a warrant and you still have to arrest them. You can't just strip search anybody you feel like. Then, during processing, the suspect would get strip-searched legally by an officer of the same sex. There is absolutely no reason any person should think that they have authority to do that to someone, even if they think they've been told by an officer to do it. I'm sorry, but I'd rather go to jail for non-compliance or obstruction rather than to force another person to strip. If I'm a criminal for not being a monster, then so be it. But this was not the case. Back to the events, Donna then decides this officer must of course be talking about her employee, Louise Ogborn, who has f***ing brown hair. It doesn't even match the description. What the f***? So what does Donna do? Does she call the police department five minutes away and tell them to come arrest Louise? No. Does she ask the cops if they have an officer, Scott? as an employee and is this his number no donna uses absolutely zero critical thinking and blatantly follows every sickening instruction by the caller for the next three hours donna takes louise's car keys her phone and eventually her clothing she makes louise strip and when she finds nothing does the nightmare end not at all Donna leaves to attend to customers and sends a line cook to watch Louise. I guess to make sure she doesn't run away naked without her keys and phone. And then the caller tells the cook to take Louise's apron off, which he refuses. Thank goodness. He mentions to Donna that he doesn't think it's right and she shouldn't be doing this. Does Donna listen? Only to the mysterious caller. He then tells her to bring her boyfriend who doesn't even work at McDonald's and is not an officer, to come do a cavity search. Now you're probably like, well, that's ridiculous. There's no way in hell that makes any f***ing sense. And why wouldn't you send an officer to do that? Did Donna think like that? No, she did not. Donna had Walter Nix Jr. come to the restaurant and perform a cavity search on this 18-year-old girl. Louise was made to dance and do jumping jacks naked, showing Walter that she had nothing stashed up there. And then he forced her to kiss him. When she refused, he spanked her until she finally complied. Then he made her perform oral sex 
and the caller on the line said it would be worse for her if she didn't do it. I can't even fathom the depravity of a person like Walter being able to go through with these actions. Even if the officers did a cavity search, it wouldn't have been a male officer performing it. She wouldn't have had to do any of the things she was forced to do, and she wouldn't have had to do the act she had to perform. Louise was only 18, so young, and she said afterwards she was in fear for her life. None of this is her fault, and her complying is completely understandable from her point of view. They took her keys. They took her phone. She had no way to call anyone to help her, even. Even in jail, you get one fucking phone call. I am so distraught for Louise. Like, I'm so sorry she had to experience any of this. Walter then left, calling his friend and telling him that he had done a terrible thing. No shit, you monster. Another employee was then told to come in the office and remove Louise's apron again, to which this employee also refused. Thank goodness. Donna then called her manager, who the caller had said he'd been on the phone with the whole time, and that manager said that was false and he was sleeping. Huh, maybe you should have called him to begin with. Donna then, I guess, woke the fuck up and realized she was a demented idiot and called the real police, who then arrested Donna for false imprisonment and Walter for S.A. and false imprisonment. Donna got a year of fucking probation, and Walter got five years after taking a plea to testify against the caller. Louise later sued McDonald's for failing to protect her. Though McDonald's tried to get the jury to not find them responsible based off of the fact that Donna didn't follow the employee manual, which explicitly prohibits strip searches, that Walter was not a McDonald's employee, and the workers' comp law does not allow employees to sue McDonald's, along with the fact that Louise didn't just refuse and leave. Huh, I wonder if somebody took her fucking keys and locked her in an office, constantly being watched to make sure that she didn't. Louise ultimately ended up being awarded $1.1 in compensatory damages and $5 million in punitive damages, which is just to punish McDonald's but eventually only ended up getting the $1.1 million after McDonald's kept appealing the $5 million and then she eventually settled for just the one point one. Luckily, though, McDonald's did have to pay for her attorney fees. It's not a great ending, but it's not the worst, right? Wrong again. For some reason, this case just keeps on getting worse. Donna then sued McDonald's for not giving warning about prank calls and not providing instructions on how to deal with said calls. Somehow, a jury awarded her $1 million in punitive and 100000 in compensatory damages. A court of appeals later lowered that punitive amount to 400000 but she still received half a million dollars after committing these heinous crimes. The worst part is, McDonald's did send information about prank calls, but apparently the first manager who saw the email thought it was unimportant for the other managers to see, and deleted it. How the fuck did Donna end up winning this? She got a payday because she can't use critical thinking? I'm astonished they ordered her ass anything. Now, you may ask, what happened to the caller on the other end? Well, police finally worked together across states after 10 years of these calls, and yes, other people were strip searched, including a customer. Apparently, this was rampant and people couldn't use their brains. They eventually tracked down David Stewart in Florida after matching the cell phone card serial numbers and seeing him on Walmart cameras buying the phone cards. They had the matching cards to several calls made in several states, yet the jury in Kentucky found him not guilty on all counts because they did not have a recording of his voice. I'm not sure that that jury really understood how technology works. He literally had the cards used to make the calls. It's not like it was just the fact that he bought the cards. He had the exact cards. However, after the arrest, the police said the prank calls stopped. So, definitely, he was uh, found innocent by a jury of his peers. But, yeah, that's all the information. I'm just giving you both sides about the caller. So yeah, this horrific case also ended horrifically and makes me extremely frustrated and angry that justice seems to be consistently slipping through the cracks. I wish people would use more critical thinking, and I mean that towards Donna and everyone else who was duped by these prank calls. 
as well as juries. I feel like every case I cover is a letdown by the jury, and it's really annoying. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you, and have a wonderful day. Much love. I really appreciate your guys' support. I've been going through a really fucking tough time. But anyway, thank you all.